Well, now that you have watched the video on the Hawthorne studies, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about some of the implications of this set of studies for group theory. This is what really when group theory started to take uh, hold some in the, in the realm of academia. And then after we talk about the Hawthorne studies, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the Ash studies uh, before we uh, watch a fun, quick video on that study itself. So in terms of the Hawthorne studies, uh, remember from the video, this was uh, conducted by the Western Electric Company in Chicago, the Hawthorne Works section, uh, conducted from 1924 to 1932. And here is where some of the group dynamics uh, realities that we've talked about so far and that we'll talk about in the future really came into sharp relief because there were expectations, there were hypotheses in the study that ended up not being true, that they found different uh, conclusions than what they were expecting. So uh, what they found as they went through the various experiments was that a worker's behavior and then their sentiments or what they were thinking or how they were feeling, those were closely related. Not only that, but the group influences, those uh, things that were affecting the whole group and not just the individual uh, on an individual level, those were actually significant in affecting individual behavior. So that's, that is interesting, right? That, uh, things that were happening to the whole group were more significant at changing individual behavior or affecting individual behavior than things that happened to just those individuals. So uh, within that, they also found that group standards were highly effective in establishing individual worker output. Here, where we talked about group norms, that's some of that language, right? That the, the norms or the standards, the expectations, when those were elevated, you found that worker output uh, improved. When those were lessened, when those were not as high, worker output waned. And so there was three major experiments. One was the illumination study, which failed completely. Uh, there was a theory that if we just improve the setting, if we just improve the light, that uh, worker output is going to increase. These folks are clearly going to be able to work better and do their work better if they can see better. Seems reasonable to me and you, but the reason that it failed is because when they were doing the experiment, the groups that they were changing the illumination on received such special attention and so much closer attention that what they saw was that worker output, because of this attention, skyrocketed. There was an element to where that group, compared to the control group, felt special and felt, uh, felt watched and uh, that they had a higher status than those around them. And their, work, their worker output increased in accordance with that attention. So there was no conclusive uh, results from if improving, the, uh, improving the setting of where work was being done in relation to worker output. Then there was the assembly room. And in the assembly room, they built on the illumination study, the, the, what they found in the illumination study, and they made one group feel special and uh, kind of picked out of the crowd. And then their control group was left normal, kind of left alone. And the group that was made to feel special and that they were uh, highly coveted by the uh, company, their output substantially increased. And so the initial thing that was found in the illumination study was confirmed in the assembly room. And then they wanted to see, okay, what is, if, if group sentiment, if group status, if group norms are 
driving worker output, what if we try other things to incentivize worker output, like wages? So there was the bank wiring uh, experiment. And what they found in the bank wiring experiment was that group norms or group behavior or group uh, status was more impactful uh, on worker output than wage. Right? That money was less a factor in determining worker output than the group standards, the group sentiments, the group security, the group norms. So these were major findings uh, within the Hawthorne study and really formed the foundation of what we uh, will continue to talk about as we talk about groups. Then, uh, after we finish with this lecture, we're going to watch a quick video on the ASH studies and conformity. Uh, the ASH studies were interesting experiments that have been re replicated uh, many times throughout the intervening years. Uh, and in the 1950s, they took a group, kind of an anonymous group, just looking at uh, kind of some poll data. And uh, so it was just kind of setting uh, expectations, but they had people planted in the group, most of the group, uh, had uh, get, been given instructions to select the wrong answer. So which line is longest? Everybody in this picture in gray would say an answer that is clearly wrong and the person in orange would be watched to see whether they conform to the wrong answer that the rest of the group is saying or whether they would give the correct answer that is clearly obvious. What they found is that members of a group, even this brought together little test group, uh, desire to be one of the group and avoid being visibly different. Uh, members with differing opinions felt ex excessive pres pressure, extensive pressure to align with the others even though they clearly knew that the others were wrong. They would rather be wrong collectively in the group than correct and stand on their own. Now, conformity has declined since the 1950s. Uh, it is not as strong now as it was 50 years ago, but it's still apparent in the world around us. Uh, you see it often in uh, school-age children, right, where there is great expectation for uh, folks to conform, even if that conformity results in uh, doing something incorrect. We see that in other cultures uh, where, there's a, where there's a strong collectivism spirit in the culture that conformity issues still uh, are strong in those cultures. So in America, maybe it has been on the, de the decline, but in a country like Japan, conformity still may be uh, much stronger there than it is here. So this uh, is interesting because it's going to tie in to many of the things that we talk about when we get to group think or group shift and how there are dangers when we are talking about a group setting. And so I hope that you find this next video interesting. Uh, it's fun. It's lighthearted. Uh, it is uh, like the Hawthorne Studies video from a while back, but it gives a good representation of this study. And then after that video, we will finish up with some discussion on groups uh, before we finish up with the discussion post to end out our week.